Hey there, I'm in uh, this morning just kind of thinking about Romans, the first few f f verses uh, where Paul says he's a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he, God, had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience for the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ. Uh, you'll notice that he says that the gospel is focused on a person. It's the gospel of God concerning his Son. And I think that one of the dangerous things that can happen for people doctrinally is that they separate spiritual concepts and doctrines from the person of Christ. And that leaves gaps, okay? The gospel is focused on the person of Christ and his work. They have to go together. That's why John talks about how we believe that Jesus is the Christ and we believe that he is the Son of God. That's two important things. That Jesus is the Christ means that he came, manifest himself in the flesh, and accomplished the work that God sent him to do. Jesus Christ means he is the anointed one who carried out God's purpose of redemption. Okay? Uh, and the fact that he's the Son of God means that he is God himself in the bosom of the Father, in whom the Father dwells, he, in, the fullness of, in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's the exact representation of God's nature. He's the expression of God. He's the Logos. He's the Word. He's the heir of all things. Okay, so the two go together. On the one hand, he's God, the Son. On the other hand, he is Jesus Christ, the man. He's the God-man. And this man was uh, spoken of by God through the prophets. And that's the scriptures. That's the testimony of God concerning his son. First John 5 says, If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. And this is the testimony which he has testified concerning his son. Okay? His Son is Jesus Christ, the Lord. He's the Son of God, and He's the Son of Man. He's the seed of the woman. He's the seed of Abraham. He's the seed of David. He's the one to whom all the promises were made. And He's also the one appointed to accomplish the great work of redemption okay, uh, and salvation. Redemption brings us back to God uh, through His blood, reconciles us. In, in his own body, in his flesh, to God. Uh, and salvation brings us his life so that he is begotten into us. Because we are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out of the Father. We've received the spirit of God, and we are born of God. We, we receive Christ, who is the spirit. Uh, it's all focused on the person of the Son, though, okay? The gospel of God, the testimony of God, the word of God, concerns his Son, Jesus Christ. Um, and he promised him before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, the prophets speak of Christ. And, you know, the Scripture says to the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. You say, well, gosh, who should I listen to? You know, these people say this guy did it, and those people say that guy did it. You know, well, the truth is not found in who done it in terms of people. The truth, the word of truth, is the testimony of God concerning his son. The one who has the truth, the one who has the light, the one who speaks according to this word, will speak according to this testimony. That's what you look for. First and foremost, you look for the testimony of Jesus Christ. 
you look for the gospel of God concerning his son because God separates people unto the gospel and gives it to them as a stewardship and the way you know whether or not God has done that is whether or not you find the testimony of Jesus Christ on their lips you know somebody said uh, well that person you know I, I'm, I'm sure they're saved because they have the gospel right yeah, but do they have the Jesus right? Because Paul warned about another Jesus. Kenneth Copeland, for example, or Kenneth Hagen, Hagen uh, taught heretical things about the Jesus. And some have gone so far as to say he suffered in hell uh, for our sins and not on the cross, not, not just on the cross. It was finished on the cross. Peter says he was put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit by which, by which what? By which his, this quickened spirit he uh, went and preached liberty, or preached to the spirits in prison uh, in Hades, who were disobedient during the flood. He announced victory. His, it was a victory procession. According to uh, Romans 10, he, ascended, he descended into the earth and ascended to heavens to fill all things. It is a victory parade. And he came out of hell with the keys. He didn't suffer down there. He had triumph because he was put to flesh, death in the flesh, but he was made alive in the spirit. Um, so, but they, they heretically say that, you know, Jesus suffered in hell, which would mean that he is not the son of God. Okay, you can have a Jesus that's the Christ that's not the son of God, meaning he is not the one in whom the father dwells. And the one who dwells in the Father, he's separate. That's tritheism. You got three gods. Or even worse, you've got God in heaven and man on earth. And Jesus is just a man who is anointed. You know, some of them teach that. Uh, Mormonism has a different Jesus. Jehovah's Witness has a different Jesus. So it's very important. See, because Kenneth Copeland will tell you that you're justified by faith in the blood and that the blood forgave you your sins and that you're the righteousness of God in Christ he can teach that part pretty well but he's got the wrong Jesus and it's only the blood of Jesus Christ God's son that uh, secured redemption for us and what you find is many people who talk about the gospel never talk about Christ it's very interesting they handle the gospel as a doctrine uh, independent of Christ separated from his person but the gospel is the testimony of God concerning his son remember Jesus said you search the scriptures thinking that in them you have eternal life but they testify of me and you will not come to me that you may have life Jesus said unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have no life in you my words they are spirit and they are life and uh, we as we saw in John 17 when he prayed to the father he said look these are these are yours because they've received your word that I gave them and believe that I came out from you. On what basis did they believe that Jesus came from God? Was it the miracles? No, this is something deeper. They received the testimony. Um, they received the word that the Father had given him, which is the testimony of God concerning his Son. And that's why when Jesus rose from the dead... Although he did present himself alive with many proofs, the main proof he kept offering was he would open their understanding and show them from the scriptures, from Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets, who he was and how he had fulfilled the scriptures. Because the point is not just, hey, there's a guy who's alive, he was dead. No, the point is that he is the one that God testified of. He is the person that is the one that God has sent and fulfilled what God has spoken. And then he said, I pray not for these alone, but for those who will believe through their word, that they may be one. What is their word? The testimony of God concerning his son. Okay, so Paul says he's a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, separated unto the word, separated unto the testimony. His whole life is about the testimony. He's been separated to it from so many things, from his old religion, right? From the world, uh, from sin even, from 
himself even, because he's been crucified, unto the gospel, which is a person and concerns a person, which he, um, he promised beforehand by the prophet in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So it's God's son. He's divine. But according to the flesh, he's made the seed of David. So he's man. And that not only is he the man, but he is the one to whom all the promises are made. The seed of David is also the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham is the seed of woman. Everything implied when God spoke in his testimony concerning this seed that was to come, this was the gospel of his son promised in the scriptures beforehand. See, some people are saying that people didn't used to believe the gospel. They believed in the blood of the bulls and goats. That's not true. They knew the blood of bulls and goats couldn't save their sins, save them from their sins, and they were looking forward to the actual deliverance. They knew that. They knew that there was the promise of the seed. God promised this from the very beginning. Okay. Uh, hold on. Sorry. Thank you. Um, anyway, when it talks about he was made the seed of flesh according to uh, David according to flesh, that means his incarnation. And then he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. That is his humanity. He was already the son of God according to his divinity. But now this seed of David is declared to be the son of God. And the covenant that God made with David was that your seed will sit on the throne forever and he will be my son and I will be a father to him. Sorry. Sorry. Sure. Uh, so that is a promise of resurrection and kingship and divination divinization, glorification of his humanity. Okay? His, he became a man. And that man was the one to whom all the promises were made. And that man, through death and resurrection, has been declared to be the Son of God according to the Davidic covenant, and he is also the coming king. But this is God's testimony concerning his Son. You can say, Jesus died for my sins. Okay? But, and he rose... For my justification and that's good but you need to make sure that as jesus died for my sins according to the scriptures and rose for my justification according to the scriptures meaning we receive the testimony of god concerning his son and we believe it because peter said look we didn't follow cunningly defied uh, fables when we made known to you the majesty of our lord but we were eyewitnesses on the mount when he was transfigured but you have a more sure word of prophecy, a more certain word of prophecy, more certain than the eyewitness testimony. And again, I said this in John 17, but uh, Jesus did the story of Lazarus and the rich man. And the rich man cried out to Abraham, send Lazarus back to warn my son so they don't end up in this place. And he said, they have Moses and the prophets. If they don't believe him, they won't believe even if somebody is raised from the dead. And, uh, you know, Jesus did raise a man named Lazarus from the dead. And people were excited and believed. And they even did Palm Sunday because of it. They were all saying hallelujah. That same group of people all was saying, crucify him. Uh, give us Barabbas. We have no king but Caesar. Just a few days later. Many of them. Um, that kind of faith is fickle. It has to be grounded on God's testimony concerning his son. That's why Jesus brought them back to the scriptures when he was raised from the dead and showed them from the scriptures all the things concerning himself. Because many people have claimed to see Jesus and have a vision of Jesus and had books written by Jesus, like Jesus Calling, that are contrary to the testimony of God concerning his son. And they have to be discarded because of that. It's another Jesus. There's another Jesus. And you can actually get pretty deep into that because there is another Jesus that the theosophists, uh, Alice Bailey, would say the Master Jesus would one day take care of control of his church. They believe that there's a Jesus who is an ascended master 
who is one of many uh, renditions of the Christ. Okay, so so you can get off the deep end if you don't have the right Jesus. And remember, the gospel is concerning Jesus. So if you don't have the right Jesus, you don't have the right gospel either. Even if you do talk about his blood and the forgiveness of sins. And the rapture and all that stuff. Okay? The testimony of God is concerning his son. And again, he says, To the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. That If that light is in you, you'll speak concerning that light. But if you don't, then, then you have not been sent by God. You may be a believer, but you aren't sent. You've not been separated under the gospel. If you don't speak of Christ, Christ, Christ. And Christ is not just the seed of David who uh, was glorified to become the Son of God according to his humanity, but he's the one who shed his blood and sat down at the right hand of God and sent forth his spirit and in resurrection is the spirit and has come to indwell us and so this person see we say he forgave my sins true but to be more precise he is your righteousness your righteousness is not something god gave to you apart from christ he gave you christ and christ is your righteousness remember paul says in first corinthians 1 30 of god are you in christ who is made to us wisdom from God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Now, each of these concepts, uh, especially righteousness, redemption, and sanctification, have been uh, separated in people's mind from the person of Christ. And anytime you do that, you end up with a dead doctrine, which will become loaded with works. Okay? Uh, no, God manifested his righteousness in the person of Christ. He is the manifestation of the righteousness of God, witnessed by the law, but manifested apart from the law, upon those who believe. And then when we believe, we we're sealed with his Holy Spirit, we are born of God, and that means he sent his Son into our spirit. We are regenerated with the life of the life-giving spirit. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. I am the resurrection and the life. It's not, I will raise you up apart from myself. Because that's what Mary said, you know, well, I know that Lazarus will raised up, be raised up on the last day. No, I am the resurrection and the life. It is my presence that is resurrection. It's my person that is resurrection. I am the life. See, we divorce these concepts. You know, the Reformed divorce righteousness from the person of Christ and assume that righteousness is law-keeping. And the reason they say Christ is our righteousness is because they say he kept the law on our behalf. And if he hadn't, we would be obligated to it, even as Gentiles. That is complete confusion. And it's because they tied righteousness to the law rather than to the person of Christ himself. Christ is the righteousness. The law is just a witness. The law is the shadow. He is the reality. And if I don't have Christ, I don't have righteousness. So many people do seem to talk about justification, and yet they can't tell you about Christ. The focus is entirely on you. Now you're forgiven. Now you're reconciled. That's good. But the focus of Paul is that Christ is your righteousness. And he's your sanctification. Now, here's the problem. The people who say, yes, you're forgiven, because they've detached you from the person of Christ, detached all these different doctrines from the person of Christ, now they're focused on you and not on Christ. So they don't minister Christ. They minister how you should proceed. And so they start by telling you not that Christ is your righteousness, but that you've been justified. And yes, you have been justified, but you've been justified because Christ is your righteousness. And then when they go on to talk about the Christian life, what they call sanctification, they don't talk about Christ at all. They talk about you and your works. That's Galatianism. You know, having begun in the spirit, you're now going to be perfected according to the flesh. Are you, um, 
how did you receive the Spirit? Was it by the hearing of faith or the works of the law? And uh, they get you into law-based ideas for sanctification, telling you that sanctification is a matter of changing your behavior. It's not. Christ is your sanctification. But you have to understand that Christ is your righteousness before you can understand Christ as your sanctification. You need to understand you've received Him. That God didn't give you something apart from Christ. He gave you Christ. He didn't give you righteousness because of Christ. He gave you Christ and He's your righteousness. And He didn't give you... He, he doesn't give you sanctification or make you do sanctification. Christ said, Jesus said, For their sakes I sanctify myself so that they may be sanctified in reality. Why? Because Christ is your sanctification. Okay? And Hebrews bears that out, too, that uh, he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them, brother, them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name in the midst of the assembly. In the great congregation, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in you. He lives in us. That is our sanctification. And when Paul talks about, if there's any process he talks about when it comes to sanctification, he uses the word renewing and washing. And it has to do with setting your mind on the things of the Spirit. And what is the things of the Spirit? Christ himself. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of di sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ is in you, right? The Christ is in me. Christ himself. This is the mystery of the Christian life. It is not Christ just in heaven. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. My flesh, my body is dead. But Christ crucified the flesh, and I've been given Christ. And the power of his cross is in the flesh. Or, I'm sorry, in his spirit, which is in my spirit. And as I learn to walk according to the Spirit by setting my mind on the things of the Spirit and acknowledging what I have in Christ and learning to agree with God's testimony concerning His Son, I am spontaneously free by the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, from the law of sin and death. If I walk according to the Spirit, it sets me free from condemnation, sets me free from the spirit of bondage, of fear, and causes me to walk according to the Spirit of sonship which bears witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God and an heir and tells me all the good things that God has given to me in Christ. Why? Because Christ is in me. He's my high priest and he is interceding for me and he is searching out the depths of God and revealing these things to me through his spirit that I've received. Christ is my sanctification. As I learn to walk according to him, I find if I walk after the uh, spirit, I'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I need to learn to not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And that has everything to do with my mind set on the Spirit and the things of Christ and God's testimony concerning His Son, which is the Gospel. The Gospel is more than you think. It's not just that a man died for your sins and rose for your justification it's that he died for your sins according to the scriptures and rose for your justification according to the scriptures. And these scriptures are God's testimony concerning his son that he gave to the holy prophets and apostles. And this word is living. In fact, this word is Christ himself. It is the spirit that bears witness. Spirit is the reality. And he takes out all things that God has given, all things that God has, he's given to Christ. And the Spirit takes from Him and reveals to us. We are directly involved with a person. And, you know, we've always said religion is not a relation, uh, not a, it's not religion, it's a relationship. Y yeah. Religion is doing things for God and thinking about things related to God apart from Christ. Christ is the reality. And if you're handling the shadow and not the reality, the doctrine and not the reality, uh, you have a dead thing. And it's because you've detached it from Christ. You know, the people who are saying that we used to be justified by 
before the before Christ came, they were justified by faith in that blood, the bulls, the goats. No, you're separating the bulls and goats from the testimony of Christ. Those pointed to Christ, and that's what they believed in. Uh, that's why they were justified. So everything is from start to finish. It's Christ, and a true minister will speak of this person. Okay, uh, if you're separated to the gospel, you're going to speak of the gospel of God concerning His Son, not just His work, but His person as well, and what God spoke, and what you're going to say is going to agree with God's testimony concerning His Son. That's what we're separated to, the gospel. Uh, and so you go, well, who do I listen to? Well, you need to listen to the person who speaks concerning the testimony of Christ. And guess what? There's very few, very few. They mostly speak of doctrines like the rapture or sanctification or even justification apart from the person of Christ. Christ is the side issue. You are the main focus. You know, the rapture is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the morning star rising in your heart. It is the manifestation of Christ the Son in his many sons who are conformed to his image and glorified with his glory and heirs together with him. They are foreknown in Christ Jesus and they're predestinated unto sonship through Jesus Christ to himself. Everything is in Christ. Uh, a lot of people talk about the rapture almost devoid of Christ. And as a result, okay, people are on the one hand excited about the rapture, but on the other hand scared because they don't know if they're going to make it. You know, And so what people give them is a doctrine to try to assure them, well, OSAS is the gospel. Problem with that is Calvinists believe OSAS, but they have a different version of the word faith, you know, and, and so they just keep making these distinctions because they've separated everything from the person of Christ. But the point is, if you have Christ, you have everything. He who has the Son has the life, and you'll be, you've been regenerated, you are sanctified, and you will be glorified. And it's to the degree that you understand that it all hinges on Christ and centers in his person that you'll have any liberty from fear uh, and that you'll begin to be washed and that you'll begin to be actually be free from things in your life that plague you. The root of our problems is that we separate things from Christ and get our eyes off his person. That's why Paul said, who has bewitched you before whose eyes Jesus Christ was set as crucified. In other words, you got your focus off Christ. That's what bewitching does it takes your eyes off the reality which is centered in him and separates things from him and get your eyes on those things apart from him whether it's justification as a doctrine or uh, sanctification as a work or rewards Christ is our reward but the main point is he's our life and God has nothing to give us other than Christ himself that's what we've been separated to and that's what God testifies of and has from the very beginning. And those who are his servants will have that testimony. So you have to be familiar with that testimony of Christ to be able to recognize God's servants and discern. Okay, the dreamers have very little Christ in anything they say. You say, well, they got the right gospel because they talk about justification by faith and forgiveness through the blood. Yeah, but who do they say Christ is? Not much. They don't speak of him much other than, well, that, you know, they say Jesus a lot, okay? But there's another Jesus. Is it the same? I don't know. I don't know what they believe about Jesus because they haven't taught enough about it. They talk about their dreams and other things apart from him. Or the rapture people, they talk about the rapture and other things apart from him. See, Christ is not the focus which shows that they may not have been separated unto the gospel of God and given a stewardship from God himself. They may not be approved for ministry. Doesn't mean they're not believers, but they're not the people I'm listening to. This is really important. 
It's the root cause of all the deception. And YouTube is rife with deception and delusion and has been. You know, these groups of people have been on here for a long time. And as you go back through the history, you see who they're associated with and who they've endorsed and what those people are involved with and stuff. You see, there's not a lot of discernment. Now, they may be clearer today or not. I don't know. But if I go by who they were associated with two, three years ago and what they were involved in, uh, have they sufficiently distanced themselves from those things? You say, well, it seems like it. I don't know. Do they speak of Christ more now? Or do they speak of doctrines apart from Christ? You just got to discern. Okay, Christ is the center and the focus of the gospel. He is the one to whom, uh, about whom the Father testifies. The law and the prophets just point to him. And if you don't have him, you've got nothing. You don't have the reality of justification. You don't have the reality of uh, sanctification. And your rapture... You may not even feel, you, you, one day you believe you go, the next you believe you're maybe not even, you know, make it. Uh, because you have not firmly rooted yourself in the faith, which is centered on a person. We are growing in the full knowledge of the Son of God. The unity of the faith has to do with the knowledge of the Son of God. It's a person. And yes, it's doctrine. It's the doctrine of Christ. Okay. We believe that doctrine. We believe God's testimony concerning His Son. I'm not talking about something mystical, like if you really believe, you'll have a magical thing, but if you don't, then you didn't get the magical thing. No, I'm saying, have you believed God's Word concerning His Son? Don't be superficial about it. Don't just watch rapture videos and not get grounded in the doctrine of God concerning His Son. Okay, we need to be rooted and grounded in the faith and established. It will cause you to overflow with thanksgiving. All right, got to run.